Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Luis. I'm a medical student from the Philippines and in this video, I'll be going over how you can improve your exam scores using the active recall method. This will be the first video in my how to study series where I go over the science back study methods that I use in medical school. So first, a brief background. When I was in college, I took up psychology as my major and one of the classes I took was called the psychology of learning. And in this class, I learned about the different factors that affect our learning and one of this includes memory. And this really got me interested in how we can use these concepts to learn new things in school and retain them for the long term. And this clashes with the current education system where they tend to focus on what we learn but fail to teach us how to learn these things properly. And it's only in medical school that I learned the techniques that I can use to make these lessons stick for the long term when I stumbled across the YouTuber Ali Abdal's channel and where he explained the concept of active recall and spaced repetition. And going over these concepts, my mind was blown about how inefficiently I'd been studying for the longest time. So in this video, I'll be discussing my insights on Ali's video, as well as my own personal research on the subject matter from reading books, articles, and research papers, in the hopes that you'll find it useful in applying to your own study, regardless of what year you're in, or whatever subject you're taking. As usual, I left links down in the description for the different segments of this video, so feel free to go down there and skip around for the parts that interest you the most. Anyway, let's start the video. So to understand why active recall is a very efficient way to review for your exams, we need to first understand why the current methods we normally use are very inefficient. I think it's fair to assume that most students, myself included, rely heavily on reading and rereading their notes or textbooks in order to prepare for an exam. And this shows also in the in a lot of research papers which I'll flash here on screen. There's even a saying amongst my upperclassmen where they said that reading more will help the information stick. However, I feel that this is a very misguided notion because the evidence shows that simply rereading is not a very good method of retaining information. And the amount of time and effort you need to put in to achieve the results of other study methods make the effort not worthwhile. In Ali's video, he cites a study that stated that passive repetitive reading produces little to no benefit for learning. And what this implies that simply rereading the text or your notes is not enough to make it stick because you're not providing measures to check if you really understand or if you retain the information. Another one of the most popular study methods is the act of highlighting. The idea of highlighting is that marking a word or phrase in a text will prime our brains and increase our chances to recall them during an exam. Although there's some evidence to show that highlighting can boost retention, it relies heavily on the skill of the student, which makes it very inefficient for inexperienced users. In addition, a study by the Losky and colleagues found that highlighting isn't very good when you're studying material that requires you to make inferences of your own. So you can simply memorize the content that you've highlighted, but if you were tasked to apply them in novel contexts, such as case-based questions, you're less likely to do so properly. However, a lot of students still tend to highlight despite this drama. My opinion on this is that a lot of students use highlighting as a safety blanket for themselves while studying to feel as that they're productive in their study sessions because they're highlighting a lot of information, even though they may be doing it passively and not really checking if they're retaining the information that they're highlighting. And the next most popular study method is the act of summarizing and noting. This act involves the condensing of information of a lecture or a chapter in a textbook down to the most important points. And there's evidence that shows that taking down well-written notes is significantly way better than just writing down everything in verbatim. However, the literature has shown that this relies heavily on the skill of the user, just like in highlighting. I've seen this firsthand where students at the top of my class use their well-crafted notes to perform well on every single major exam, while at the same time, I have classmates who also rely on their notes but struggle in the same exams, which shows how your skill level in taking down notes translates to your ability to perform well in exams. So to recap what we've discussed so far, I've discussed how rereading, highlighting, summarizing, and note-taking are very popular ways to revise amongst students, but at the same time are very inefficient ways to do so. The question is now, what is the best technique to review for exams based on the scientific evidence? Once again, we refer back to Professor Dunlowski's study, and the answer to this question is active recall. Active recall is the process by which we ask yourself questions while reviewing material. So while learning, you ask yourself a question about the material, you give yourself time to answer the question, and then you evaluate whether or not you got the question right or wrong. Besides giving you feedback on whether or not you actually know the material, 
The very act of trying to recall the information strengthens the neural connections within our brain so that in the future when we try to recall the same information, it becomes faster and easier to do so. In the video that Ali made about this topic, he highlighted a study in this video where a group of students was divided into four groups where one group was required to read the material once, one reviewed the material four times, one reviewed the material by creating a concept map, and the fourth group did a retrieval practice. The results of the study showed that the students who tried to actively recall the information they had just learned performed significantly better than the other study methods employed. And what this significantly highlights once again is that rereading is a very inefficient means of relearning because simply testing yourself once significantly outperform rereading the text four times, which would obviously take a greater amount of time to do. So at this point in the video, I hope I've convinced you that active recall is probably one of the best techniques you can use while studying for exams. If you'd like to learn more about the evidence and science behind it, I recommend that you watch Ali's video, which I'll link down in the description, as well as the book Make It Stick, where the authors go even more in depth about the science of what I've just discussed today. To apply what we've learned in this video, here are some techniques that I utilize to apply the principles of active recall. Flashcards are a great way to test yourself, whether it's physical or the app-based versions, but personally, I use the app called Anki. Anki is a free flashcard program for desktop, Android, and with a paid version on iOS, and it has a built-in algorithm that allows you to test yourself on the content. As I hinted earlier in the video, note-taking can be a very useful tool while studying, if done right. Note-taking can adopt the active recall principles by creating questions or keywords for yourself within the notes. This is typically done by writing these down on the column of the left-hand side of your notes while placing the answers on the right-hand side, where you can cover the right-hand side with your hand and test yourself based on the keywords on the left-hand column. How I do this method is that I use the toggle feature in Notion to write down the question as the main point, then hide the answer under it where I can toggle to reveal it once I've answered the question in my head. Using these two methods, when I go to review for my exams, I don't simply rely on rereading my notes, but also I test myself using the questions I've written so I can strengthen the neural connections in my brain and make it easier to retrieve this information come exam day. On top of these two methods, I also apply the technique of metacognition, which is thinking about thinking when answering these questions because it's not only important to know the correct answer, but also why you repetitively commit mistakes. Doing so will help you correct any erroneous form of thinking and strengthen the neural connections of what is correct. To recap what I discussed in this video, I went over why rereading, highlighting, and summarizing or note-taking are probably not the most efficient ways to review, for example. However, if you found success in using these techniques for your exams, by all means, continue doing that. But for those struggling in school or having a hard time reaching their academic goals, I suggest you try incorporating the principles of active recall into your study techniques and see how they improve your academic performance. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content. My name's Luis and I'll see you guys in the next video.